Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for coming in for the uh, Dexter Smarty Pants Hideaway Headlight Conversion story. Before we get started on the actual kits, we'll tell you a little bit about the company and how we got started, actually. Um, several years ago, while I was restoring my GTO, we came across the only kit that was available was 1200 bucks, and I didn't want to spend that. As, as we all know, we're trying to save money uh, restoring our cars, so I thought, well, I'll just design my own since I'm a welder fabricator and uh, save 1200 bucks. And I started going to shows once I did get my car done. And everybody says, well, what about my car? What about LTD? What about the Lincoln Continental? And I said, well, geez, I don't know anything about hideaway headlights. So I started researching it. There was three companies that make hideaway headlight conversion kits. West Coast County Customs, which basically only did Cougars, uh, these style cars here. And I think they're pretty much not doing it anymore because they can't find parts. So we're the only company now doing Cougars. Uh, Retro Electric, which is the kit that Ames sells for GTOs. And D Detroit Speed is another company. So there's three companies out there basically making hideaway conversion kits that I found. A lot of people sell them, but they don't make them. So I was only looking for manufacturers. Uh, but what I did find was those three companies, like West Coast County Cougars, only did Cougars. Uh, Detroit Speed and Retro Electric only did high runner cars, which basically was your Camaros, Corvettes, GTOs, a uh, few cars like that. But nobody was doing anything else. So in my research, I found that uh, there's around 120 different models from the 60s and 70s of cars that have different styles or versions of hideaway headlights and zero people making parts for them. Uh, so I thought, well, I'll try this. I made my GTO kit. I'll make some GTO kits and then I started doing other things. <coughs> Uh, so what I would do was I'd get a customer's car in. So I'd take this 65 Buick Riviera, which I think is the coolest hideaway headlight system there is. Uh, although there's a lot of mechanical parts to make that work, it's still a pretty cool system. So I would get a, car, a customer's car in a shop and I would actually design the kit for them. I'd make the fixtures so I can mass produce them. I'd make all the blueprints and everything and then I'd give the product to the customer or let me use their car. But one of the things that the car had to have, it had to have AC on it because uh, even Retro Electric's kit that is for GTOs will not fit an AC car. Our kits are the only kits that will fit AC cars. So if it fits an AC car, it'll fit anything. So that's one of the bo bonuses of our, or our designs. So. The more cars I started getting in, I was running ads for about a year trying to get oddball cars in the shop. And as it turns out, we're up to 67 different models now out of 120. Uh, we plan on doing them all. We got a 70 Super B coming in, which I never thought in a million years anybody would need a conversion kit for that. But I get four calls probably a week for a Super B, and I didn't even think there's that many around anymore. So. Um, the biggest question I get about why my kit's different than anybody else's, I don't badmouth my competition, they've been doing it for a while, I've been doing this for three years, but in that three years we've become the world's largest manufacturer of red light conversions, so we're doing something correct. Uh, the big difference between our kits and the competition kit <coughs> is, I'm going to pick on the Retro Electric because they do GTOs. Nobody else does Grand Prix but, but us. So. Uh, their kit has billet aluminum bracketry. Looks cool, but you can't see it on your car. It's not $300 cool if you can't see it. The other issue they have is their controllers. They have electric uh, circuit board controllers for each side of the car, $150 a side. And the only thing that controller does for you is if your headlights are on, 
and you're driving at night and you want to flash your headlights at somebody, which I don't know anybody that even does that anymore, you flash your headlights at somebody, the doors move on mine. Retro electric gives a three second delay. So the door doesn't move if you flash your headlights at somebody. Is that worth 300 bucks to you? Anybody in here flash their headlights at anybody anymore? So there's your $600 difference right there. My kits, or our kits, are so simple it ain't funny. And the problem with being simple is anybody with any fabricating skills or any mechanical skills can steal my product. And it's happened. It, my product showed up on the market at a lot of places and I've tried going after them and it's, it's pretty difficult. So when I say simple, I mean that my instructions are pretty kindergarten. They have arrows pointing at each bolt or screw that you need to remove or replace. The instruction manuals are just as kindergarten. You got five wires, positive, negative to the battery, two wires to the control with the electric actuator, and you got one wire that's running to your dimmer switch. That's the only thing that's not in the kit, is that one wire that runs to the dimmer switch, and I'll tell you why. Uh, Retroelectric, Detroit Speed have what a lot of you guys call plug and play. Plug and play has its downfalls because whatever length of wire they give you, that's the only place you can hide that controller. If you're doing a concourse car or a car that you want to be sanitary with, uh, that piece of wire is not going to get you where you want to go. So our kits are not plug and play. You have to do a little crimping here and there. But we, uh, you can mount the controller anywhere. We've had guys mount them up underneath the dash. My personal preference is to stick them up inside the fender by the battery. It's close to the battery. And then you run one wire, one single wire, to your dimmer switch. Everybody's thinking dimmer switch, why? Why not your headlight switch? Uh, we've ran into problems with aftermarket headlight switches. We've run into problems with aftermarket wiring harnesses. And what happens is the guys put the kits on and they work fine until you hit your brights and then the doors close. Well, that's not cool. So it's backfeeding through the aftermarket uh, products that are out there. So, what's common in all the cars from the 60s and 70s is the old dimmer switch on the floor. The dimmer switch on the floor is completely dead until you pull the headlights on. You, most all of them have three wires. The center wire becomes hot when you pull the headlight switch on. You got low beam, you got high beam. So, if we run that wire to that single terminal on the dimmer switch, we've now eliminated all back feeding issues through uh, aftermarket headlight switches and wiring harnesses. So that's the only thing not in the kit is the wire that goes from the dimmer switch to wherever you decide you want to mount the, the uh, controller. Um, in two years, this started out as like a hobby and now it's turned into a full-time job. Um, in two years we've <clears throat> sold uh, probably 600 kits, uh, most of them GTOs, I'd have to tell you, probably uh, 450 GTO kits out of 600, and the rest are cars that I thought would never sell, like 66 uh, uh, Oldsmobile, Tornado, I wouldn't even think there's a lot of them around either, but there is. So, in getting into this business, I decided that I'm a motorhead just like everybody else. I'm trying to save a buck just like everybody else. So I make these kits as simple and as convenient to the customer as I can and as cheap as I can. Uh, out of the 67 models that we got done out of the 120, uh, there might be three, maybe four that you have to do any kind of fabricate. You might have to drill a hole or trim a little piece of metal off. Uh, you'd be hard pressed if I told you it was on the, on the car, you probably wouldn't even know it got cut off. So, what I try to do when I, when I fabricate these and design these kits, I want to use factory bolt holes on the car. Everything that's already on the car, I got to make sure it clears horns, all the brackets, AC condensers, and all that stuff. So, if you ever decide to sell your car or want to go thousand point concourse, you can technically take my kit off 
and bolt the stock stuff back up and nobody even know the difference. So, <clears throat> talking about concourse as well, uh, my car is obviously modified class concourse. They don't care if it's got electric on there. Uh, the only thing, and we asked the question yesterday in here with the guy, uh, Jeff, he had a pet peeve seminar in here, and what I hear a lot of is, um, you know, my headlights don't work, but I want to keep it original. What does that really mean? It means you're never going to drive it at night? It means you're going to have a droopy eye the rest of your life? What does original really mean? Unless you're a thousand point concourse car, it don't mean nothing. So what I tell people is since there's no fabrication on your car, you're using the stock bolt holes, you're using everything that you can take back off, a lot of guys want to leave the vacuum lines on the car, leave the big tank, the air tank on the car, so it still looks original, but your headlights function. Nobody even knows the difference. Um, a lot of guys say, well, this is kind of loud. You're sitting in the car, you're not going to hear that. I mean, if you're sitting in the driver's seat, you're not going to hear it. Uh, the videos that I post online, or so the, used to be on my website, I use the cell phone, and that sounds really loud in the shop. But it's, you're hearing what it actually is. Um, so that's the story about how the company came about. And I'm not bragging, but out of the 650 kits we've sold, we've had zero warranty claims. We've had nothing but 100% customer satisfaction. Uh, the only problems we have is if guys, for whatever reason, they think they got to ground stuff. And uh, nowhere in my instructions does it say ground anything. If they think they want to ground it, and they'll burn them control route. As soon as they fire it up the first time. I give them a new one. But I tell them, nowhere in instructions is say to ground it. So uh, you can make it everything as kindergarten as you can, but pe some people think they want to read between the lines and make it more make it more difficult than it is, and it's not really that difficult. So that's how the business started. Let's get to the simplicity of the kit. Well, before we get too carried away. You came here for the air conditioning and the free kit. That's why you came here. You didn't want to listen to me. Uh, my beautiful wife's going to hand out uh, tickets. You're going to rip them in half and put one half in the bucket. And then when the seminar is over, we're going to draw a, t a winner. And whatever kit we have, I don't care if it's a Pontiac or not, if it's something that we have, we'll, we'll give it to you. So that's up to a $700 gift from our company to you. Uh, simplicity of the kits, most of the kits, uh, I'll tell you straight up, probably the 68 Grand Prix is probably the most difficult car to do out of all of our kits. And, and it depends on, um, it depends on the car. Some are, uh, some you could probably put together in 20 minutes if you're good. Most of the cars are two, two and a half hours to complete the, the system. You don't have to be a mechanic. You don't, you like a couple of seven sixteenths wrenches and a wire crimper, about all you really need to put our kits on. Um, on the GTO, you take the two center grill pieces out, you put all the mechanisms in there, controller, you're going to mount it by the battery or wherever you like. But the trick is, is to line your chrome up on any of these cars, is to get the chrome lined up with the uh, center grill where you want it in the closed position. Mind you, your headlights are closed 95% of its life anyway. So you want it to look nice in the closed position. So once you get everything lined up where you want it, you're going to take the grills back out, tighten all the bolts up, and you'll never touch it again. That's that how simple it is. Once it's in a closed position, you're done. Um, like I said, a couple 7 16 wrenches. Uh, a lot of our stuff is pin and cotter pin, so you don't even need wrenches for that. Uh, uh, I was going to get to the 68 Grand Prix. That's probably the most difficult because of the, the way the front end is on the 68 Grand Prix. Uh, you got your two main uh, bumper brackets that go down to the frame. You're going to take the two front bolts out, loosen the back too, so the fr whole front end is going to lean out towards you. 
put a milk crate or something under it to hold it up. So that thing's going to lean out towards you and everything's going to go in the top. That's how much, it's not that much harder, but it is the hardest kit to do. Um, I'm trying to think if I've missed anything yet. Pass out the tickets, did you pass out the tickets? Okay. Don't forget to tell them that the same day they order, that's when we ship it out. Yeah, that's another thing. I, I guess I should have got on my own website and remember what I put down for questions and answers. Uh, one thing that helps us out as a business, and I, I hear this every week, you actually call, you actually answer the phone when we call? I'm the guy. <laughs> so when you call that number, I'm the character you're going to talk to, and I'll help you any way I can to get the system put together. I just had a guy call me when we were setting up here. Uh, my electronics don't work. I rattle it and it works. And, you know, first thing in my mind, he hasn't hooked it up. Uh, made good connections. So I asked him, I said, uh, try this and try that and call me back. So half an hour later, he calls me back. It was my battery. It was his battery connection. It wasn't none of my stuff. So, I've had one complaint, and I'll tell you, I've had one complaint in three years. Some guy didn't like the way my welds looked on one of the brackets. And he's probably an engineer. <laughs> so that's the only complaint you get out of three years. I guess I'm doing pretty good. So, uh, we ship same day you order, unless it's a holiday or Saturday and Sunday. We keep everything in stock. Uh, Say. We got any questions? Any questions before we get all the tickets passed out here? Yes, sir. You said electronics, or is it just a simple motor that operates when you put power to it? I, I see him put puts power to it, and they open, and he takes power off and closes. So I, the, the, the electric actuator that actually makes the doors work has self-limiting switches in it. So when it gets in its travel, it shuts all power off. I had a, Guy one time say, "Well, your kit's drawing my battery dead overnight. Yeah. It can't happen. The electric actuator has limit switches in, so when it gets to the top of its travel, it shuts itself off, or when it gets to the bottom of its travel, it shuts itself completely off. All the controller does is switch the polarity of the system. So when you pull the headlights on, it's going one way." When you shut the headlights off, the battery is actually the driver that shuts the, the doors. Okay, it don't have as much of a microprocessor. No, no, no. It's okay. a simple motor and a simple controller. Yeah, okay. I said to make it simple. I just, you um, mentioned electronics. Like, no, okay. It's so simple, I'll tell you, the first year, Thank you. The first year we was in business, I sold uh, an actual GTO kit to a guy named Tom Vioni in, in, in uh, New York. Within three weeks, he's selling my kit on his Facebook page. So he copied my stuff, copied my instructions, copied my wiring diagram, everything. Do you have a patent? Uh, here's the thing about patents. I have trademarks and I have copyrights. The reason I can't get patents on it is because they're over 75 years old from Ford, Chrysler, and once the patent expires, uh, it's kind of free gratis, but in the same token, when you design something, like my, my original patent design was connecting the two together, which uh, wasn't very popular with a lot of manufacturers. Uh, you spend a lot of money trying to get patents and all that to find out that you're spinning your wheels, and when I called my patent attorney about this guy in New York, he said, well, you know, if he's making five or six of them or whatever, you'll spend more money suing a guy than it's worth. Right, right. So, um, so that's where that stands. A, a story that he told me, which is what I do now, is Coca-Cola doesn't have trademarks, or doesn't have patents on anything. Coca-Cola <coughs> trademarked their name, Coca-Cola, and it's on all of their products, whether it's 
Sprite or root beer right. or whatever. So they can make 150,000 different flavors of drink and only have one trademark on all of it versus 150 patents, which patents would cost you a whole lot more. So basically, that's what I do now. I trademark everything. But the scary skull, as some people think is scary, I think it's funny. Uh, that actually is my trademark. The skull is my trademark. So if I make all 120 kits, I got one trademark on all 120 instead of having 120 uh, patents. So, um, there's a couple other things that just touched my tongue and then I forgot what I was going to say. But, uh, any other questions? Yeah. I've got a 69 with fixed headlights and I know that um, you can buy like a complete conversion kit to vacuum, but are there any companies that sell just the parts that I need? Ames. In, in addition to what you've got? Yes. Okay. Ames actually sells a kit. Okay. It's 1200 bucks, I believe, somewhere right. in that ballpark for taking your fixed to yes. hideaways. Okay. Now, in that kit that Ames sells, it's also going to have the vacuum actuator. So. Right. If you like vacuum, that's fine, but uh, I'm trying to get everybody away from vacuum, and I'll tell you why. Not just because I sell them. I hear all the horror stories about why my headlights don't work. Uh, out of all the stories I hear, maybe one out of a hundred guys swears his vacuum system's perfect and it works every time. Uh, in my research that I talked about earlier, I found that Ford, Chrysler, and General Motors sent out service bulletins to all their dealerships to start their cars in the morning so they'd have enough vacuum to hold the doors closed during the day so they could sell cars. So they knew it was junk from pretty much day one. Then they went from not wanting the guys to start their cars every morning and put heavier springs on to keep the doors closed. Well, that in turn made the vacuum actuator work twice as hard and made the vacuum actuator so, if anybody's bought any vacuum actuators now, I, I, I don't remember off the top of my head what a GTO is, but uh, in looking through all the different varieties of cars that we're working on, they're $200 to $600 a vacuum canister. And if you got two on your car, there's $1,200 for two vacuum canisters, and you're not even really sure if that's going to fix your problem. Uh, vacuum lines. Vacuum lines today are not like they were back in the day. Um, they're cheaper, I think, but you know, guys are having issues with the headlight switch. If you have fixed headlights and you're wanting to go to uh, hideaways, you don't need to change your headlight switch. Uh, in fact, you don't have to change any of the headlight switches. So if you already have a vacuum uh, operated car and the switch is messing up the vacuum, so you can leave it in there because the electronics is the only part of that switch that you need. So you don't have to switch anything. Yeah, but it, there's not a company that sells the, the conversion parts without the, the vacuum accessories. No, as well. no unfortunately guess, not. Okay. Uh, my car has, I made it in a Duro Delete uh, with a chrome bumper on there. Now I got four guys in Australia wanting me to build them just a chrome bumper with hideaways in it, which was never a factory option. Uh, I haven't done it yet. I'm afraid what the shipping is going to be in Australia for a whole front end. But, um, but there's a lot of guys that call me up saying, well, I want to buy your kit to, to go make my uh, car hideaway. Well, it's not hideaway after I get to talk to them. It's fixed headlights. So the only way you can do that, to answer your question, Ames sells the kit to, for the doors, the hinges, and yeah. whatnot. But it's going to come vacuum. So if you want the electric, you definitely Right. Go beyond that. Um, the springs go away when you, on your kit? Yeah, you really don't need the springs. Yeah, okay. uh, I, I know my springs are, I, I talked to you earlier. Yeah, I yeah. The strength of them, I yeah. double them up yeah. to keep them. Uh, you know, I encourage guys to keep the parts they take off your car. Uh, as we all know, parts are getting hard to find. In the event somebody ever you you're, you want to sell the car, or your kid takes over the car and wants to switch it back, you have at least have the parts. I mean, there was a guy out here in the yard yesterday 
what was looking for a set of hideaways out here in this, this swap meet area. And I said, well, I already looked because I'd have got them. <laughs> but there's not out there. So if, if you do decide to either go electric or go uh, hide away from your fixed headlights, keep your old stuff. Someday somebody might want it with the car and <clears throat> decide to sell it. So I had a whole bunch of videos on here to show you, but I couldn't get it running. The, the computer geek kid, he got some of them running just to show you a variety of, of the things that we do. And somebody asked about 120 uh, versions of cars. Um, you know, all the Buick Rivieras we do, all the Oldsmobile Tornados, all the Cougars. Uh, we do not all of Lincoln Continentals, but quite a few of them. Uh, the list goes on and on of the different models that we do. But uh, what started out as a fix for my own car has now turned into the uh, world's largest company of Idaho headlights, which is kind of funny to me because I'm just a small guy. But um, I'm doing it to help everybody else out that's trying to save money on their car or really can't find parts. Uh, we were in um, Pennsylvania a couple, three weeks ago for the Ford Nationals and they, a guy came up and he asked me if I had this valve that went on the fender well. Well, all it is is a valve that switches the vacuum from up and down. I said, no, that's a stock part. I don't carry stock parts. And I go, are you having a hard time finding it? He goes, that's $540 if you can find one. So what I'm finding out is, is not only do these guys can't find parts to fix their vacuum, uh, we're the only option to get their headlights working, period, since they can't find these parts. So I'm kind of proud of that idea that we can help other guys out in having difficulties um, getting parts and getting their cars. Guy, you know, I've heard every horror story about I prop my doors open with chopsticks or a piece of garden hose or whatever the case may be or kick the fender and then it'll release them. There's no sense in that. I mean, once you hook our system up, you'll never touch your headlights again. It's just that simple. And the fact that we can keep it as low price as we can, you know, it might change if the economy keeps going like it is, but we're still there to, to make things as cheap as we can. So. Any other questions? Dick, can, can you see the actuator on your grill that you have here? Uh, what I do is I paint everything semi-gloss black. And the reason I do that is because uh, most of your grill inserts are black. So if you're going to look through there, uh, nine times out of ten, you're not going to see it anyway. Uh, and it depends on the model of the car. Some of them are up in the fender wells you can't see anyway. But I'd say 90% of my stuff you can't see. Does it show up if you turn it around just to see what it looks like? Uh, I boxed this off simply oh, okay. because people were taking pictures and stealing. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Good idea. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's that simple. I mean, uh, I, I was kind of nice about leaving it open. I actually painted it all my parts bright yellow. So that you, this is what you're getting with a kid. Well, you know, the first thing to do is we whip our phone up. So, crap, I can make that. See you later. So, being a nice guy didn't work there. Um, any other questions? Jeez, I didn't take very long. <laughs> Tell us about your tea bucket. <laughs> Well, the tea bucket, I, I had a welding and fabrication business uh, years ago, and uh, I was building hot rods and dragsters and tractor pullers and monster trucks and stuff for everybody else, and I thought, well, geez, I need something. And I always thought a car with an open motor was cool, so I actually built the tea bucket for advertising for my company years ago, and we've kept it. Um, I built the whole, everything from scratch. The chassis, the frame, everything. Uh, it was back in 1989, I think. Uh, the wife and I have driven that thing from uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana to Santa Monica, California on Route 66 and back twice. Uh, other than going through the California desert, the 103 degrees, it was like baked potatoes in it, but other than that, it's a <laughs> pretty nice toy. So it's out there. We just brought it just to show people. 
But, you know, people might think I make a lot of money at this, but I had all my toys before I had this, this, this business. So this business, I actually retired from General Motors to do this. Um, I was making good money at General Motors, but I felt as a car guy that this is something that the car hobby needed because there wasn't anybody out there doing it. No, nobody's doing LTDs, Lincoln Continentals, the weird stuff. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty much weird, weirdo. So that was right up my alley of yeah. doing all the odd ones. <laughs> um, I'm telling you, we probably get a half a dozen calls a day from all over the world. Uh, what can you do for me? Uh, and they ask for cars that, that they don't even make in the United States, that they've made probably over in Australia or something, if I can make a kit for that. Well, I, I want the car there in my shop so I can make sure that clearance is right, the doors open and line up perfectly and everything. And I certainly can't do that from Australia. So, um, well, we'll send you pictures. Well, that, that might get you close, but if I'm going to put my name on something, I want to make sure it's perfect and it's going to fit right every time. So I can't help everybody out in Australia or wherever, but New Zealand. <laughs> but we do get calls from all over the place. Um, you know, the reason uh, a lot of guys are souping up their cars, and we talked about resto mods and stuff the other day where guys are putting LSs and stuff, and, which is kind of a bad, taboo thing to do. but. Anytime you got a cam camshaft to your car, uh, it's going to change your vacuum in the car and your headlights ain't going to work correctly. So if they work poorly before you hopped up your motor, they're really not going to work after you hop up your motor. So another thing that, and I'm not finger pointing any guys, but it's amazing how many guys don't work on their cars anymore. Or don't know anything about their cars, let them put gas in it. Uh, that if you're Vacuum doors aren't working correctly. You got one that's hanging and never comes up. You got a vacuum leak somewhere. That affects your engine on the performance of your engine and your gas mileage and all kinds of stuff. So, uh, if you're going to convert to electric and you want your car to look original, I tell them leave all the stuff on there, but go back to where the uh, your vacuum canister, the coffee can, or whatever you want to call it. That main line that goes back to the intake manifold, pull it off the engine and cap it on the engine. That eliminates all problems of, you know, if your headlights and doors ain't working, why leave the rotted vacuum line on there, losing vacuum from your engine and getting bad gas mileage and bad performance? So, oh, I didn't know that. Well, that's what I'm telling you. You know, if you want it to look original, cork it at the, at the motor. Don't just leave the stuff hanging. Any other questions? Are you cooled off enough? You ready to go back outside? Or are you ready to win something? <laughs> um, have I missed anything? Um, if you're having a problem putting the headlights on um, or a question, you can call. He'll answer the phone. He'll be right under the hood with you with his phone, you know, telling you know what you need to do next. He's always available. And she's pretty mad about that. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so the deal was uh, everybody get a ticket. Last guy I walked in, you can't get a ticket. You didn't get it here at the spiel. <laughs> <laughs> Huh? You need a ticket? Yeah, go get him a ticket. He can get a ticket. Yeah. He was working out there getting a... Uh, I know. He bought it. Here. Come up here. You can get a ticket. It took me an hour to feel my shirt off. Said it doesn't have to be a GTO or a Pontiac. If you got another car at home in your garage, it's Oldsmobile or Buick, and you need a kit. 
I'll give you that kit. Okay. The winning number 050 622 221. One? <laughs> there you go. Lucky you. Good. I was only one number off. <laughs> I was trying to make it suspenseful with that last number. Yeah, we know you got it. We are also, not only do we give away a kit here, we're sponsoring a, uh, a couple of uh, bus rides to the country music uh, fame or museum and uh, distillery, I think, which is Saturday again. And also, uh, if you, since you didn't all win, we do have kits out at the trailer and we're doing $40 off at the show. So if you are interested in a, in a kit, we'll, we'll do $40 off any kit that you want out of the trailer. So. Well, thanks everybody for coming in. I hope I didn't bore anybody. Thank you. And actually out of all the shows that we do, we like we actually like doing the Pontiac show.